Today I'm going to talk about how choosing the right palette can really help you take a step forward in your painting. A big turning point for me in my painting is when I started to look at a scene and really start to identify the large shapes of the scene. And when you can do this, you start to paint in a more connected way. You're painting and creating what connects and unifies that scene versus all these little parts around the scene. So if you take a look at this value study and take a look at the scene, you can see that even when you're painting in one color and you're seeing that as one large shape, your brain can fill in a lot of the details. That's one of the big keys to good painting, letting the viewer's eye fill in the gap, so suggesting detail. When I learned to paint in this way, my palette had to change to this new philosophy, this new way of painting. Okay, here's a look at an older palette that I used to use. This is a Holbein metal palette. The problem I ran into with this palette though is there just wasn't enough mixing space. So what I ended up getting next was this John Pike palette. The mixing well, it's wide open. It's one large mixing area. And at first, if you're used to a palette like this, you might be thinking, well, why do I wanna mix all my colors together? But actually, if you're laying this on a flat surface, your colors will really stay in separate little pools. And then I have this large mixing area to work with. Moving over to this larger palette, giving myself more room made a big difference in my painting approach. And let's talk about why that was important. I paint scenes in three steps, light values, middle values, and darks. Painting that light value wash, I'm painting wet into wet on the paper. And because I'm working wet into wet, I don't have to worry about getting hard edges. Mixing is not as crucial and as time sensitive in this stage of your painting. Then once that wash dries, I'm into painting my middle values. And this is where this palette really comes in handy. Having this extra mixing space allows me to pre-plan and pre-mix colors that I'm going to need in this middle value shape. And I can get a head start into one of the more difficult parts of the painting. Also having a large mixing area, I'm really able to get bold, strong washes. When I first started out, a lot of my paintings were really high key. There was a lot of really light washes and I wasn't getting a really bold, strong mixture. When I've pre-wet my paints and I have a lot of room on my palette, I'm more able to get really rich mixtures. And this can open the door to painting really deep, rich blues in the skies, really strong mixtures that you need for those large, dark areas of your painting, even moving into like painting a nocturne scene. Because I have the room and I have the space and I'm working with fresh paint on this palette, it makes subjects like that much more doable. So if you're working from a small palette and you aren't getting that strength, that vibrancy that you need, or if you're slowing down during a key part of your painting because you don't have the right mixing space, move to something a little bit bigger. Hopefully that will help you take that next step forward because it's surprising when you have the right materials, how much of a difference that can make. And it helped me get that strength and that vibrancy in my work that I was really lacking prior to that. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.